Hello, welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another large spool block chip. This one is very useful and very impressive for how it's all been set up. And it's called the Noah Heavy Lifter, which is this lovely thing that I'm currently standing on and of course shaking on top of. So this, if the name did not give it away already, is a transportation ship, a cargo transport ship or a land vehicle transport ship, where you can deploy a very fancy ramp at the front that's set up to the hinges and pistons. Just put your cargo on there, you lift it up and down as a simple elevator. Then once you're all loaded up and clamped in place, you then lift this thing up. Your thrusters will then spin around because it's a full-on VTOL system. that will take you to where you need to go. We are good for being on both a planet and in space because we've got both hydrogen and atmospheric thrusters. And it's just a very novel thing that can carry passages as well, if you want to do that. But I feel like I should just demonstrate this straight off the bat because it is just a lot easier to show than it is to describe how this thing functions. So grab me hold my character, turning around, getting to the cockpit, here we go, with the free camera position basically like this, so it didn't need to change too much. I need to press number 8 and then number 9. Number 8 is now going to fall down a ramp at the front there. There it comes. Just going to fall all the way around. And it's going to go into a nice flat platform. This is going to be what we're going to use to put our vehicles on top of. Or just put your cargo containers on top of there, so you have like a forklift or some kind of magnetic plate forklift. Just going to push stuff onto there and eventually push it on over into the main body. Yes, once that's all set up, we press number 9, that will now drop down onto the ground, so here it comes. We do have a very fancy hinge system at the back there, not too sure what that is meant to be, I believe that is sort of a stabilising system. Yes, that's now just about complete, there we are. So now I can just grab hold of the vehicle, which I have set up and ready to go. So if we want to grab the big one over here, undo the parking brake, and now very, very carefully drive it onto this platform. I did, in my testing, destroy this platform quite, well, quite easily with this, because it is a very fast and very blingy vehicle to how the gyroscopes have been set up. Here's that one's on there. Now come across to this one because we might well take up two at the same time. So we come all the way across. This one's a bit more fiddly to because it is very low to the ground. Come all the way around. And just about up. There we go. Slamming on the parking brakes. Grabbing hold of my character once again. There we go. Free camera. Pressing number nine. That's going to lift them both all the way up. There we are. And of course, if no one's sitting in the cockpit or say you're trying to load up stuff manually yourself, there's no need for you to jetpack into the cockpit to control this. Because as you saw on the side there, on both sides of this platform, as well as underneath the platform, we've got two buttons that control the exact same thing. One for the piston, and one to fold up the ramp. Now we're at the very top here and still wobbling around. It's time for me to grab hold of one of these vehicles. Here we go, that'll do quite nicely. Now we just drive all the way forward. Of course, if we are like a cargo container, we just simply clamp ourselves down onto those landing legs that you see in front of you. For a vehicle, we simply drive all the way up to this, pull in your parking brakes, and that's about it. Do the same for this one, so all the way forward, being very careful now. And there we are, we're now ready to go. So back into this, free camera once again. We now press number 8, fold up the ramp. There we go, we're going to look at it like so. And then once it's like that, we are now ready to take off. So with my character in the cockpit, third person view, here we go. Over to tab number 2, looking all the way down to here. It's got even more folding parts on this thing. I can press number 1. That's now going to lift up our landing legs below there. But they are not traditional landing legs, they do not have anything to place on there, or any way to clamp yourself down. They are just simply to sit on the surface to deploy the RAM. Yes, now we're like this, we're in the camera like so, and now get some height off the ground. Here we come all the way up. We want to be quite high for this, because it is going to disable our thrusters and dampeners. So we change from our hovering mode into our VTOL mode. Oh no, I forgot to clamp them down. Oh well, they just had to sit on the side there. And we're going to press number 2. Here we go. Dampeners turn off. They turn forwards, turn back on. Now we can just drive this thing away. Here we go. I hope they'll want those vehicles because they're going to drag this vehicle down to the ground and will cause a very big explosion. And there we go. We now see we've been told to pull up. Lots of explosions on the sides of this vehicle just clamp or crash into each other. And here we go into the mountainside. So back into a brand new one. I'm going to press F10, find it in the spawn menu. Here we go. This thing is a whopping 5,300 small blocks using the Sparks of the Future and Decorative Block DLC pack. We've got a nice bit of information at the very top here, a little bit of lore behind it, as well as it was tested in 1G of Gravity, and there's all the other bits of information there. Down to here is your specifications, there's your true block count at 3,840, and down to there is all your important systems. So we've got cargo containers, we've got a personal base, so four seats, which are not airtight for your passengers, we've got our VTOL Amsterdam thrusters, and of course we've got our decks, small batteries, large batteries, hydrogen tanks, both large and small, oxygen tanks, O2 H2 generators, eight of them to make sure this can fly for a nice long time, all detectors, and of course we've got no defense, so we are setting Doug for any kind of drones in survival mode. But yes, down to there's the scripts of how it's all been working. But simply give us a thumbs up. I'm going to turn off the power. There we go, so we'll now stop moving around, be nice and steady. 
Let's come around over to here, take a look around the outside, then we'll go and fly around for a bit, and maybe do a bit more loading and crashing into stuff. So down to here below our ramp, what we can see is, well, our steel blocks that make up the ramp, as well as our hinges to fold across the other section of the ramp, to make sure it's a nice big platform to get a nice big vehicle on top of. We can also see two buttons on both sides, we already talked about them, one is the piston, and one is to fold the ramp. Down over to here, we then see some hydrogen thrusters help slow this thing down, as well as a few spotlights through a lot of darkness, and there's the start of many hinges and pistons that go all the way around this one. These are a few landing legs down below here, so getting a bit closer look at them. So over here, this is how it's been set up. Up there's some more interior lights. Over here, we see more hinges on the side there. Just come down underneath it. There we go, that's how the landing leg has been set up. We'll have a better look at them when we actually go underneath this thing. Yes, pulling away from here, round on the side, turning off my lights, here we go. So over this part, there we go, so fantastic use of fire interior lights on the top there, adding a bit of side decorations. Over there's a the camera, so we can see where we're going with this thing. Over onto this part, this is the start of one of our VTOL wings. We've got our hinges folded, forwards and backwards. Then of course, onto the pod itself, we've got a big hodgepodge of different blocks here. It's got batteries, we've got steel blocks. We've then got some sci-fi skin, we've got some grey skin, orange skin, black skin. And then in the middle there, we can see a hamster thruster here off the ground. Over and onto the side. There we go, we've got some hydrogen thrusters, then an atmospheric thruster for the opposite, so we've got plenty of thrust with this thing. Then down and underneath it, looking at it like so, there we are, that's a very clear view, both our thrusters, and of course the hydrogen in the middle. Pulling up this, looking at on the side, there we go, so we see it connect on this side, same on the opposite for you to clamp this thing up, and of course to refill up your hydrogen tanks, and while well, dock it up and recharge the batteries. Over here is exactly the same with what we just saw with our VTOL thruster. Over on onto the back, there we are, we've got some more thrusters for our left and right, more fantastic use of our steel blocks in general, just making it look all the nice and fancy. More interior lights, our O2 HE generator just sticking out the side right there. Looking around here, more hydrogen thrusters. And we can see the start of a hydrogen tank. That'll connect it up to our thruster at the back here, where each individual thruster, so we've got four of them over here, will have a hydrogen tank attached onto them. Then we've got some more thrusters in between them. Right into the dead middle, we've then got a ladder to be able to get up and into the platform. So we've got alternative way to get up here, see if the ramp was out of commission. Then down to here, once again, our orange pistons and hinges for our landing legs to our lift up and down as we're to land down and take off. Moving all the way up and looking down, here we go. So down to here, we've got a lovely little canopy system of where our seats are sitting, so they can be sitting right down to here. So here we go, we've got four seats. Then of course, onto the side here, we've then got a rotor, a small steel block on top of it, adding as a fake antenna. Onto this part with the orange roof, this is your industrial cockpit or your main cockpit in general. We do have a few bits and bobs going all the way around this thing, so up to here. And looking around to there, there we go, so we've got a tripod at the back. Generally just there for some decorations, but I suppose you could use it in the long run if you are taking a lot of damage. There is your cockpit at the front. I believe I called it a cap cockpit just a second ago, so do excuse that. Yes, across the front here, some spotlights with a lot of darkness. Over there, a bunch of LCD screens. There's a very clear view of our seats for your passengers to sit on, as well as your ladder to get up and inside. Over there, below these other spotlights, we can then see our hydrogen tanks attached onto our thrusters. And onto this part right here. This is then the top of our beetle thrusters, which is simply the tops of our amsoc thrusters, and a bunch of steel blocks. Zoom away from here, moving across to the main platform. Here we go. So yes, we've got one hell of a lot of landing legs just facing all the way up, or in fact upside down, and this is how we're going to clamp stuff down. So you want to make sure your cargo container is not going to go anywhere anytime soon, or if you're doing some fancy tricks with the thing, say doing a backflip, front flip, or just doing twirls in general, you don't want your cargo just falling off this, like you saw at the start of the video. So yeah, they're just to clamp it down. But of course we've got our connectors for our traditional connection system. So you just land down your ship, connect up your land vehicle onto this and clamp it in place. Or just do what I did, just hit the parking brakes and hope for the best. Anyway, towards the front, there's our ramp and how it's all being folded up. And then we'll put on the power, press number A's. Now just look at it like so as it just falls all the way down. There we go. So that little section moves towards the front. And then just flattens itself out. There we are, good looking like... I don't know, we'll just come down and underneath it like so. Screw look at it like that. Pressing it again. And there we are. A bit wibbly, a bit wobbly, but perfectly safe from my testing. And there we are. So turning off the power once again, putting the free camera all the way up. And I believe, yes, we have to come down and underneath it. There we are. So that's how the bottom has been set up. There's our connector for the opposite side. We have a bit of detail on there in the form of light grey blocks and white blocks where you wouldn't normally see unless you were directly under the ship. Which if you are directly under this ship, it's going to be quite deadly, because this thing does come down to the ground naturally by itself, because it can't quite hover due to the vector thrust system. Getting a bit closer up and over here, so we see the bottom of our legs. There's our pistons, there's our hinges. Then cross over here for the bottom of our thrusters on the side there. 
And yes, that is an O2 HD generator. Then it's up to advanced rotor, that goes up to a connector, and of course towards the main body of the vehicle. And with that, I believe that is it for the outside of the Noah Heavy Lifter. It looks bloody fantastic, it has all been set up. Absolute fantastic design. Shame it wasn't more popular on the workshop. It only had about 200 subscribers. That's really shame because this is a lot of fun and very impressive. But anyway, yes, putting the power back on. First person view, here we go. We've got a few controls to go through. In fact, a lot of controls, including a sneaky set on tab number nine. But we don't really need to touch any of them. It's only the first two tabs that have all of our important stuff. Yes, number one is going to be your batteries to auto recharge, with number two and number five is going to be your landing legs, which are going to control all the ones you see on that platform right down there. So number one is going to control the port side, which is your left, and then number five is going to control the starboard side, which is your right. Number three, number four, number six, number seven is for your connectors, which are all four that you see currently in front of you. And then number eight, number nine is what we've already seen all throughout this video, which is going to be for your platform and the front there to hold it all the way out. Then of course number nine, to drop it all the way down. Anyway, third person view, putting the camera all the way around. Over to tab number two, number one's gonna feel landing legs below here, so we're gonna get a better look at this with the free camera. So all the way down, looking at like so, pressing number one, and then that's how it works. So our pistons pull all the way in, and they get dragged all the way up, and they go completely flush with the rest of the vehicle. And there we are, excusing the noises. That's also talking about with the vehicle not being able to keep itself in the air. It will slowly come down to the grounds. And yes, that's one hell of a lot of noise. Pressing number one again to lift it all the way back up. And there we are, that's a lot more quieter and a lot better. Anyway, number two is going to change your thrusters on the side there from the lift off to your forward facing. So putting the free camera all the way around like so. So there we are, we're now ready to lift this thing off the ground and go up in the height and out of the atmosphere. But once we're ready to scoot along the world at high speed, press number two, they switch off, move forwards, and then switch back on. Very simple thing that does add a lot to a vehicle. And I'm always a big sucker for vector thrust systems, so this thing is very nice to me. Anyway, pressing that again, they turn off, switch back, turn back on. Anyway, number three, number six, seven, eight, and nine, it's all for your hydrogen thrusters around the ship, but I do not need to go through them, because they're very self explanatory, we'll have them all being set up. Here's number four for your O2HG generators, and then number five, it's in for your hydrogen tanks to stock power on and off, depending on if you're connected up, and have a source to actually restock this with. Over to number three, we've then got a bunch of us spotlights all the way around this thing, so they're all on, all off. And then one hell of a lot of cameras all the way around this so we get a good view exactly what's going on. So if you think you're going to crash into something or you think something is going wrong with this thing, you have a camera to check on it to save you from having to pop out and go and see it yourself. Over to tab number 4 we've got our antenna, or detector and then our rear camera. Popping out of that, 6, 7 and 7 for your lights to turn them on and off. There we go. And of course we've got our gyroscopes but we do not need to touch them. Tab number 5 and 7 for your spotlights once again. Over to tab number 6, got nothing else, 7 nothing else, 8 nothing else, number 9, it's in your artificial mass, and then a beacon. And with that, what I'm going to do now is just pop out of this once again, and well, that's the wrong character, I don't know where this character is, but we're just going to bring him all the way over, there we go. We're now going to spawn in a brand new land vehicle, load up properly, clamp it in place, and we'll drive it around properly to see how it handles, that that'll do quite nicely. So hopping into the seat, I'm doing the parking brake, moving the sink all the way around towards the very front, here we go, this thing is a very large vehicle, much larger than I remember, but this one is very fun because it does have a periscope on top of it. So we can press number 7, there we go, that lifts all the way up, and then you get a fantastic view of what's going on. And of course you can extend it all the way up if you want to to get an even better view. Yes, it's not really too helpful, but docking this thing up. It's out of that, and of course bring that all the way back down, like so, like so. I'm driving all the way up. This might fit, it might not, I think it's a bit too big for this thing. Yes it is, so we might have to go grab another one, although... Although, I think this might actually work if I put the parking brake on. Select this character, press number 9. Will this actually work? Will it lift all the way up? Yes, it will. I will be able to get this thing onto the back of it. And there we are. We're now on the very back of it. We'll hang off quite precariously, but I can now undo the parking brake and hold forwards. And here we are. We're now up and above here, taking up the entire platform. But I can now lock that in place. Come back into this character. And now I can press number 2, number 5, lock that all in place. So hopefully now if I press number 8 and take off, or not wander off and cause this thing to crash. There we are, and then I'll fold all the way back. And we're ready to fly this thing around. So pressing spacebar, here we go. Over time number 2, pressing number 1 to of course fold them all the way back in as well. And there we are. So yes, like I said, we will come down to the ground very, very slowly. So it's sort of like an automatic landing system. So if you're hovering for too long, or if you say just leave the game running, you will come down to the ground very carefully to make sure you're not going to run out of hydrogen in the long run. 
Anyway, yes, pressing spacebar, that's the speed we get with vehicle on top of us. Moving forwards, here we go. And yes, that vehicle is firmly in place. The thing is not the fastest thing in the world when it's in hover mode. We want to get a bit higher up. So here come much, much higher because this thing's going to be much, much heavier due to the vehicle on top of it. That should do quite nicely. So back over to here, pressing them to playing with fire, looking at it in first person view. They fall forwards. And now away we go. We are going to come down to the ground because this thing is very heavy. So we've got to tilt it backwards. And hopefully this will work. This will be a bit better if I was in space. In fact, we're going to save it very quickly here. So up to here, falling it like so. And there we are. We now just fly this thing around through space and not risk slamming into the Earth like planets. And yes, there we are. We're now running at 104 meters per second. Coming to a stop. That's what we get. Of course, doing a 180. We've got plenty of control over this. So we can do a 180. Boost forward. Stop it a lot quicker. And there we are with that. Pressing on two. Now go back into hover mode. And there we are. And yes, that's the controls, as you saw, moving this thing around. We are very heavy, but we've got plenty of control over this. So we can maneuver this thing around, depending on what we need to do with this vehicle. And should do very well in survival mode, if you do want to use it in survival mode. But it is a very big, risky vehicle, because there's a lot that can go wrong with it. Anyway, as for that, that's pretty much it for the Noah Heavy Lifter has to offer. It's a fantastic looking vehicle, a fantastic functioning vehicle. They could get a lot of fun out if you do want to have a heavy loader. Now I'm just going to pull all the way down, release that vehicle, and they can slowly fly towards the Earth-like planet, or while just fly off into the distance to be forgotten until I eventually clean up. But anyway, as I was saying, it's a fantastic little vehicle to use in your world. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around yourself. Highly recommend you do, even if it's just to check out the lift system to see what's going on with it. And there goes the vehicle all the way past us. Yes, as I said, link to it in the description below, as well as the link to the skybox we're currently using. I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.